short period of time and possibly in a lot of pain and that might already be dead, that might be causing problems to the mother, um, situations where the mother's health is at risk, where she's at risk of losing her eyesight, things like that. So obviously we can't have a law that says she can't have the treatment that she needs. This is medical treatment that she needs. Now that said, you know, and you, and you talked about are you prepared to, you know, think that there might be exceptions to this. I absolutely think that there are women who only find out they're pregnant at 25 weeks and they're so desperate to get an abortion they know the law is 24 weeks um, and they're, so they're frantically trying to prove that the fetus has serious abnormalities when that may not be there are definitely women who are doing that and we also see women who travel to places like Canada and Holland very small numbers of women women in extreme situations they don't tend to be women who've just had a few too many alcopops and changed their mind they tend to be for example you know a, a nine-year-old who's been raped didn't realize she could get pregnant perhaps she's been raped by her own father suddenly she goes to the doctor's stomach ache they think it's gastroenteritis the next thing you know they say you're 25 weeks pregnant now in that situation quite understandably the mother and you know and people around might go or well, maybe there's a way we can we can sneak round the law and what that shows us really is that the law the law sometimes can be harsh and can be cruel and and that's why I think you know what we have in Canada where the law where the law wouldn't force her to continue with that pregnancy especially when her life is at risk I think we can see why that exists so um, yeah when we look at women yeah. what we don't just, what just we, to say yeah. that you know yeah. limited time in the one hour yeah. program we've got yeah. the the live phone line open now so we and I think we have a phone call coming in so if you could hold that until after yeah. the call uh, Mike, Mike from Exeter, welcome to the debate, Mike. Thanks, Ben. Um, I've got a question which gives me a, a great deal of problem. Please speak uh, up. Please, sorry, can you hear? Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, hang on. Is that any better? Better, thank you. Right. Um, I've been a Christian for quite some time, and I believe that it's wrong to take life, but... If you, so if you take that as a principle, but if you took a worst case scenario of a woman, a married woman, who from a medical point of view shouldn't be, shouldn't get pregnant because it could be life threatening, if she was raped and became pregnant, I would find it very difficult to say no, she shouldn't have an abortion. Okay, Mike, thank but on you. On the other hand, that would break the principle of not killing, and so I find this a really difficult question. Okay, I appreciate that, Mike, and thanks for the, you know, the, putting the question. I think I should put that to Bernadette. Yeah. Well, firstly, I think it's important to pick up that there is no medical necessity. Yes, there is. It's been Salisa clearly. Uh, let Salisa me finish. So, uh, she's, yes. Dead. Yes. she's dead. Yes, she's dead because okay, of mismanagement of woman. her kids. She is dead. And her unborn she was child was a human because being. Of your campaign. Because, her. because of her. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't sit here and look at a murderer lying to camera, but, Tim, but, and just let her talk. But on stats, I but on stats, you you have. I've always given you a fair chance to answer. So just allow her to answer, and you can answer her back. You can answer her back. Murderer being allowed to sit You can answer her back. A murderer? Woman. Who's a murderer? Your campaigning directly contributed to the death of Savita Halapanava, and no you know it. There is no medical necessity, and I think that's been proven. But there I is. Think, I think Kate needs to no, it read hasn't. That's clearly the outcome myth. of Savita case. But, yes. let's put so, this to you, yes, if yep. in the extreme case the, uh, the mother is indisputably, her life is at risk, what judgment do you make Those there? are very rare cases. Yeah, but in that in rare, those case. rare enough, cases. Now they're rare. Those very rare Lying. cases, women will be giving all the medical care that they need. Women with cancer can continue on with the pregnancy with chemotherapy. Women with oh. high blood pressure, for example, can be treated by good drugs and good bed rest. Northern Ireland and the South of Ireland has the lowest maternal death rate. When we look at the Savita case, and as a very unique case in its own right, what happened in that particular case was not because she couldn't have an abortion, it was mismanagement. Was. The case was it very was clear. She was it not was. given the proper antibiotics. So the reality of it, of it is the World Health Organization recognizes Ireland is the safest place I in the world for a mother to be pregnant. The UK has a very high maternal death rate from all causes and specifically because in one part of the hospital we have a doctor who's treating two patients, a mother and a child, and in another part of the hospital we have a doctor who is aborting a baby. It's a schizophrenic type of health care. I think Ireland proves that where we have no abortion, women are safer. And this is what this debate's about, is about the protection of human life, the life of the child in the womb, the life of the mother. 
two unique individuals who equally should be protected. Personhood of the unborn child, very clear. Northern Ireland and the UK have a piece of legislation that recognises the unborn child as a person. In fact, the 1967 Abortion Act does not make abortion legal. What it does is it protects the doctor who performs an abortion in those very rare cases. So personhood begins at conception, throughout pregnancy, throughout life. Record. You've said this a hundred well, times. You, can, you, cannot, you can't no. get that okay. very clear, Kate. But that the unborn child is a human being. But, but it's but wrong Bernadette. to destroy those babies. Bernadette. And the reality of it is, face the reality, Kate, Bernadette. you were once Bernadette. you were once a fetus. You were once an embryo. Okay. Yeah. Now, yeah. Now, and I think it's vitally important. You know, I, t I, I started out at the very beginning because yeah. I didn't want to get stuck in this very yeah. boring, broken record, explaining that I haven't answer, finished and I will or I will leave this studio. First of all, I've already been clear that even if you define an embryo as a human being, that doesn't give it the right to live inside me if I don't want it there. That is not how humans interact. That is not how it works. And I've also talked about what I think about the notion of when life begins. But more importantly, you're claiming, and this is an outrageous lie, that there is no such thing as a woman who will, who will lose her life if she continues with her pregnancy. And yet, Within the last year, the, the, the Vatican has canonised a woman who did exactly that, who continued with the chemotherapy and as a result lost her life and left her children and, 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 and oh, as a secondary effect. How, yeah. how, well is, how is, of course it's okay, a second, I mean, a I mean how is losing your life anything but, um, but, but a first the effect, are, she's the, dead. The rules she's are that dead. we have... And the Pope has canonised her. But we're talking about the something else now. The Pope has canonised her. So do you deny that she exists? But not, of course not. she exists, so it does happen. And it is happening. I know I'm not, David Dimbleby. Died as a result. Okay, we have a caller. You are the driver. We have a caller, Claire. Well done for getting through. Claire from West London. Welcome Hi. to the debate. Uh, please, Hello. please fire away. We can hear you. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make the comment, um, which was um, with regards to Kate saying that, um, you know, we should have the choice not to be um, incubators. Um, well, that choice, although I don't agree with the terminology of being an incubator, um, I think we are um, well-designed bodies that are there to give life, not just be incubators in the way a machine would be in a hospital. But let's go with that terminology. The choice not to be an incubator, I think, would be before having sex or having the act that leads to such, that leads to the baby or the fetus. So if she didn't want to be in a position where she would be a quote-unquote incubator, then she shouldn't have the act that could lead to the baby or the fetus. Again, the word fetus means young one which is obviously a young one of human life, not just um, any old animal, but a human life. Um, and so if, if that's the case, then, um, you know, the act is where the choice is made. Not once the baby is there or the young one is there, you say, oh, well, I'm just going to get rid of it because I don't want to be an incubator. Well, the choice should have been before the act. Claire, thank you. Engage in the act. Thank you very much, Claire, for making that point. That's another one for Kate. Uh, it is, yeah. Um, so, um, uh, yeah. So, first of all, um, what Claire is overlooking is that <laughs> there are a lot of women getting pregnant who don't want to be pregnant. So, there's definitely, um, there's de so first of all, we've got obviously rape cases, we've got incest cases, we've got all sorts of abuse cases. Now, in actual fact, a lot of people assume that abortion is something to do with, uh, you know, young foolish teeners, teenagers having unprotected sex, and there's no doubt that some of them do get pregnant. And perhaps uh, we could do a great deal to improve sex education in schools, and I'd be absolutely in favour of that, uh, letting people know about the options that are out there. Um, but in actual fact, much more common, uh, uh, you know, driver of these things uh, is, is two things. Is firstly that, you know, contraception can fail um, and, uh, and, you know, when it does, uh, perhaps because it's not being used correctly, perhaps because it interferes with the medication, this kind of stuff, perhaps because people aren't able to access it fully. Um, in actual fact, a lot of people are really actively trying not to get pregnant. But also there are lots of people who want to be pregnant and once they are pregnant, their circumstances change, their relationship breaks up, their job ends, things like this. Um, one very common thing that we hear is that an existing child uh, 
uh, develops a health problem and they are very much aware of the amount of time they're going to want to dedicate to that. And in actual fact, we think of the stereotypical abortion seeker as being a, you know, a young, foolish teenager. And in actual fact, the most common uh, woman who comes seeking an abortion is a woman who is worried about her existing children, a woman who already has children. She knows how much work it is and she knows how much time and energy she's going to have to devote to a new child. And she knows that she doesn't have those resources right now and she doesn't want to compromise the way that she's raising her existing children. So there's all of that. Um, but ultimately, and I'm really glad this has been raised, ultimately, um, what we're hearing here is that, is that pregnancy uh, is, is being viewed as like some sort of punishment uh, for women who have sex. And what we're actually hearing is this idea that women shouldn't be having sex. And first of all, uh, I think that overlooks that sex is a wonderful, healthy, enjoyable thing uh, that people can do and have a great time. And, you know, let, let's be honest, you know, we're sat around the table. Uh, we've, I've been hearing about people's wives and children. Everybody around this table is doing it, you know, not right now, I hope. But all of us do it. We're grown-ups uh, and we can choose when we do it and when we don't do it. And, uh, you know, men are very much not punished um, when they have sex, even if they are having sex with lots of different people and being very reckless and careless about it. And so women should not be punished in the same way. Unwanted pregnancy cannot be a punishment for having sexual intercourse. Now, I might just add to that yeah. that there are those people out there who advocate for this abstinence, that everybody should be abstinent unless they definitely want to have a baby until they're married and all this kind of stuff. And that's been a big program in the US and there have been lots of pushes to introduce it in other parts of the world. Uh, it has an 88% failure rate. Research in the US shows that 88% of young people who make a virginity pledge break it. So it just doesn't work. Well, I would disagree with that when but we talk about abstinence because we've actually seen yeah. where abstinence programs are enacted in states in America. We have a lower rate of sex transmitted diseases, lower rate of teen pregnancies. No, you don't. But just That's to pick up true. there Look what Kate was saying, because there, there was something very important that she referred to um, in disability, the cases of disability. Women who give birth to children with life-limiting conditions like... Um, hydrocephalus or anything and, and that those life-threatening conditions where children are not going to survive actually um, are better served and continuing the pregnancy those women um, the after effects of giving birth to those babies is kinder to the mother and the child and they're very rare as well to say that women's lives are in danger in those cases because they're pregnant with a, dis a disabled child that's not the case in fact um, only 1% of abortions performed in the UK is for sexual assault and disability. The rest are social. Right, um, we have Ali on the line. Okay, okay. Um, Ali, thank you for waiting. Welcome to uh, the debate. Thank you. Uh, thank you for taking my question. It's a question for Kate, actually. Um, it's just um, a, one simple question. When a woman has a miscarriage, she always says, I've lost my baby never my fetus. But when a woman goes for an abortion, oh, very conveniently, it becomes a fetus. I would love to know your uh, response to that. My friend lost her baby at three weeks old, and she lost a baby. And then I've got hearing about girls going, having, pre having abortions, and they're all of a sudden called a fetus. What a vile word for a wonderful, precious life. Thank you. Well, yeah, you're absolutely right that different people choose to use different language. And I think it would be very, very... In and there are certainly women who have an abortion. Um, and I, I've talked about women who have a late-term abortion for medical reasons. And I have a, a very close friend who went through exactly that, painted the nursery, picked names, couldn't have been more excited uh, about, you know, having, having a baby and becoming a mother. And... Um, you know, and she absolutely uses the term baby. And she's, and I, you know, I mean, as if I would turn around to somebody and say, that's not, you know, that's not the right word for you to use. If we're going to have a scientific discussion around this table, then we should use scientific terminology. But, you know, any individual human being who wants to use, do you know what I mean? You, 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 can, you, can, you can use whatever language you want. Why would, I, why would I tell you not to? And in actual fact, of course, the reason that they use it... I haven't, child. sorry. Yeah. Dehumanise the child. That's well, no, but I think that what you do... Well, Dehumanise language. And I think that what you do is deliberately try to emotively humanise what is a cluster of cells. Oh, okay. so, so a cluster of cells. OK, yeah, so then let's get um, scientific facts. An unborn child. You once upon a time, moment you, Bernadette, used to be a cluster of cells. Yeah, and, yeah. Okay. and what am Frankly, I? you still are. There's just quite a lot of cells well, these days, and they see, do talk a lot of nonsense. The reality right. is now, I want to, now I want to know, just ask to, another... When you start to attack, okay. uh, you know... Your, oh, we have another caller. You've, you've lost, no you've lost it, Kate. You've lost about. it. OK, we have another caller. Um, Ali, is that correct? I didn't hear. I thought we'd just done Ali. 
So, <laughs> um, I want to ask a question uh, to put to both of you. When Jeremy Hunt became Health Secretary, I don't want to discuss Jeremy Hunt, but he said that he supported reducing the, the term to 12 weeks. If that were to happen, it would mean that it would preclude tests for Down syndrome and other disability tests. Um, what do you think about that? Well, what would happen is exactly what happens between Ireland and London at the moment. What would happen is that women who decided after 12 weeks, for whatever reason,